Welcome to Unit 11 of EGSE 614. This unit is a two-week unit. So as usual in a two-week unit, your first post for the activity discussion for participation credit will be required by the first Sunday night of the unit. So after one week in this course unit, you want to make sure that you have your initial post with that text or source citation in APA format to support your statements. And then once again, the minimum of two responses required by the final Sunday. So after we've been in the unit two weeks, that Sunday at 11.59 p.m. As the unit wraps up, you'll want to make sure that you have at least two responses posted. Obviously, it's ideal to do these earlier rather than later to make sure that others have time to review your responses and reflect right back to your questions or to your statements with their own responses. Take a look here. We've got the Shea reading assignment and we're going to have a focus on plans for action or crisis. We do have quiz number four and that'll be similar to the quiz that you quizzes that you've taken beforehand in our course. We have our discussion, the activity discussion for participation credit, which we just reviewed the posting deadlines for that. And then really the major assignment that is due at the end of this unit on the final Sunday of that unit by 11.59 p.m. along with the quiz would be the brochure assignment. So we will go over that in this video in detail to ensure that everybody is clear about the requirements and that we're all on the same page. So for unit 11, there is a written lecture here, and this will help us to make sure that we're all prepared for evaluating our intervention data. So remember, we are in a unique situation currently. You're going to want to create intervention data based on what you would have expected to see before the closures. And it is unfortunate that we're in a situation where we can't collect this on site in real time. However, we are going to make the best of what we have gathered thus far and then extrapolate, analyze from that data what you would expect to see with the intervention based on any trends that you were observing before closures. So be sure to go through this written summary here as part of the lecture. If you do not see a change in behavior after the implementation of the intervention, one very important thing to examine is fidelity of implementation. And what we mean by that phrase is I want to make sure that everybody who's responsible for the implementation of that intervention is doing it consistently and doing it correctly. Those are the two most important things to look for because, as we know, if there's a primary stakeholder or anybody working closely with the student who is not implementing the intervention, that can often partially or completely cancel out the work of those who are implementing it correctly. Part of the way that we can prevent this is making sure that everybody is on the same play page with very clear planning meetings and documents summarizing the intervention or the plan that's being put in place. That's where the follow-up support comes in, additional training and guidance as necessary. And this can also be examined using observation. If we are not seeing the growth or improvement that we are looking for, definitely helpful to check in, really get into the classroom with those teachers who have high contact time with the student and are expected to be implementing. And there can be observations where the percentage value will be calculated based on which steps are implemented with fidelity. So interestingly, just as you might take data on a student, the data taking process for fidelity of implementation within a school setting is similar. Keep in mind that 100% fidelity of implementation is optimal, but it is not realistic. We all know that there are many, many variables that impact each of us throughout a school day in a setting that is frequently and rapidly changing. So we are shooting for 80% or higher. And it's definitely just important that we keep 
that in mind, aiming for success, but not perfection. Think about what is realistic, continuing to coach, continuing to support. You do need to think about reasons why somebody might not be implementing the intervention with fidelity. Is it too complex? Is it too difficult? Or does the person not agree with it or believe in it? It's definitely something that you might encounter. Do you see these documents related to crisis planning? These are PDF formats, so they can be reviewed as you have the opportunity. Here is a guide for school crisis. And a great deal of information regarding preparation before a crisis, as well as what actions might be taken during a crisis, and what we can do after a crisis. So this is some good supplemental information on crisis planning in schools. Parts of this might be implemented in a behavior intervention plan. So this document does provide examples of those who might be involved in crisis planning. Here is additional information, case studies. So do take time to check that out. And then we do have our quiz. So keep in mind the work of Colvin as you're completing this quiz and be sure to cite the Colvin text or any other relevant sources in APA format in your responses. We wanna show your mastery of the course content as you answer the questions in this quiz. This is a survey just to make sure that we are on track, make sure that I'm doing what I can to help and support you, especially during these unique times while we're trying to make these projects work um, as the majority of us are limited in our access to students. So please do make sure that you respond here. Let me know what I can do to support you. And for the meat of the unit, it's very important that we examine the legal and ethical requirements brochure. So this is a trifold brochure. Pretty straightforward assignment. The most important thing to address as you're working on this is the checklist. So the whole checklist, it's got 14 points. It's all included here. You can rate yourself as you go. And obviously we've got the rubric per usual. But one suggestion, if you've not started already, or even if you have and you want to transfer your information, a website that may be very helpful in the creation of this brochure is Canva. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with it or have used it before, but it does have many different free templates that can be used. So as you can see, you will sign up, create a free account, and then you can start designing a brochure. And as you take a look, there are many different templates. And in my experience, it's pretty user-friendly. So you can add stock photos or your own graphics and visuals that you've created. I would encourage you to check out canva.com if you don't already have a plan in place for a program to use to create a brochure. It's generally pretty easy. So you will keep an eye on the rubric as you go and you will really work from the checklist. That's the most important thing. So we'll walk through that checklist in this video. But this is an informational brochure, so you need to think about who your target audience is, and most importantly, please, whatever topic you choose, address both legal and ethical aspects or requirements or factors related to your chosen topic. So when we say legal, remember, we're going to want to cite the law, and we've been working um, both in this course and in previous courses on examining the law. So you may be citing federal law, case law, but we want to get that legal evidence in, in addition to the ethical components. So really think critically, try and go beyond the surface here as we're looking into the ethical side of things. What would you take into consideration when you're attempting to implement ethical decision making surrounding your selected issue? And you will see some examples of issues that you may select down below here. But please do hit on both legal and ethical components or related issues and be sure to cite sources to back up your claims as always. You will want to keep in mind your target audience throughout, and this is a trifold brochure. So you can also check out Microsoft Word. There may be some options there or other problem programs if you have them, but Canva is a good one. 
and you will want to submit as a PDF or any other file that will be accessible for grading. Um, should be able to take a PDF and I have opened options for a couple others such as Microsoft Word if that's what you choose to do. So there are options, three different areas, and if you have chosen a different one, please let me know. I have heard from some about other topics, and there are other options, but these are some that are fairly easy to address, both from legal and ethical components. So there are some sites with information. Just talk about an example, restraint. Um, so if you're looking at restraint complaints or seclusion, what kinds of laws are in place for these? Really think about, as we said, legal and ethical, first of all, which policies and laws are in place for restraint, if that's the issue as your topic that you have chosen. What laws are surrounding that? You could look at um, statutory law, you could look at case law. And in addition, what are the ethical components? So. When examining ethics, obviously you can cite sources and evidence, but you also really want to bring in your own thoughts, beliefs, philosophy, and perspective regarding restraint. So when you're considering the use of restraint in special education in the school setting, what does a school team owe to a student as an ethical obligation? Please do clearly address both legal and ethical components as you complete this assignment. And in addition to that, you'll obviously want to get your name on here. This is our checklist. A headline. You want to state a major benefit or entice the readers. So kind of that catch or that hook. Really think about if you're looking at a bunch of brochures in an administrator's office, what would cause you to want to grab your own brochure uh, off the wall or off of the table? What's going to be a good attention grabber? And then you're making clear the subject, other than just this little attention-grabbing statement. You want to have clear subheadings, and Canva or whatever program you use probably can help you do that with some bold writing, etc. Larger font, perhaps. Then keep your text fairly short, so you want to go paragraphs and paragraphs. Keep it straightforward. Uh, bullet points may be helpful for this, or a table. And when we say features and benefits, obviously with something like restraint, maybe benefits is not the appropriate word, but we're more thinking about what are the factors and variables, which things must be taken into consideration, what are situations in which this might occur. You could even list benefits of not using restraint, or if you do want to consider benefits of restraint, for instance, restraint would only be used in the case that there is significant risk posed to self or others. So. You could argue that when done properly and appropriately, restraint could uh, be a safety measure. So that could be one thing that you cite there. And then once again, lists or charts, making sure that you're doing visuals and bullet points or captions and that whatever would be helpful to organize this information in a way that's accessible for the reader and grabs the attention throughout. So continuing to address key concepts and components in your headings. If you do choose steps or parts, for instance, you might put information in here about crisis prevention and de-escalation. That would be a good thing to include. Basically, how can we de-escalate and uh, get out of a crisis in a safe way without having to use restraint, for instance? That could be a helpful piece of information to include here. You'll want to do all your references in APA format, both with the in-text citations and with a little reference page there. And by page, I mean perhaps a little box or wherever you can fit those in APA format. Make sure that you've got that uh, syntax, grammar, mechanics, everything correct and in place. The review of the literature, you will want to integrate research and you could cite your textbook, other relevant sources, and some decorative elements. So which kinds of graphics might grab the eye of the reader. Diagrams or flowcharts, making sure to make use of those visuals. And then a call to action, please do include this. So what can the reader do? Who should they visit or talk with? What kind of information can they provide? How can they advocate for students, etc.? It's very important to include that at the end. Do take a look at the rubric as well. I want to make sure we address everything in the checklist, organized format, grammar and mechanics, as usual, that you get those graphics in there, cite your sources, and that you address ethical and legal components. That is 
one of the most important things to keep in mind. Look forward to reviewing your submissions.